Matt. Mm. Matt, come on. Cinderella. Wake up. Fuck off. But Matt. Look, man. Like Blink-182 said in their classic album, Black Parade, wake me up when September ends. Uh, forget it. September is over. It's October 1st. Metal Ween. Yeah, bud. Metal Ween. Metal Ween. Fucking love Metal Ween. There were some movies. Terrible movies. Movies so awful. No one would touch. Then came a Matthew. Sad little Matthew. Matthew decided these movies to watch. For every good movie, there's at least ten bad. Matthew really dragged himself through the crap to find the worst ones there are to be had. Today's episode Hard Rock Zombies. <sighs> Happy fucking Metal Ween. I genuinely love this time of year. And I'm afraid I'm gonna overdo it. But fuck it, it's Metal Ween, and you know what's metal? Zombies. I said before that vampires are the most metal monsters, and I'll stand by that. But zombies take a pretty close second. I mean, they are cannibal corpses, and that's the name of a metal band, so you know it's gotta be metal. So in 1985, someone put one and two together and made a zombie movie about a hard rock band. And that man's name was Krishna Shah. I think, I probably botched that pronunciation. He directed Hard Rock Zombies and wrote it along with David Ball. This would be Ball's first movie and he'd go on to work with Shaw on American Drive-In, the last film either of them would make. The film stars mostly unknown actors, but it's got a few bigger name actors in minor roles. The one my audience would probably know best is Phil Fondaracco. He played one of the Ewoks, but more importantly, he appears in a number of Full Moon movies, including Evil Bong. But the star of the film is named E.J. Curse. Appropriate. Oh, and uh, the DVD I'm using was put out by Blue Laser. Nice try, Blue Laser. This party is busted! What the crap?! So let's dive right into this first installment of Metal Ween, Hard Rock Zombies. So the film starts, and no, this is not a stylistic choice. This film from 1985 seriously looks this bad. Maybe there's a better preserved version somewhere, but the Blue Laser DVD and a VHS from back in the day appear to be the only releases of the film. I'm starting to get the sense the movies I review aren't that popular. So before we even introduce the main characters, we have a girl stripping. Classy. Although they film it from such a distance and the quality is so low, I can't tell if she's actually naked or not. A man follows her into the lake as a man in an eye patch and two little people watch on the opposite shore. I guess the naked chick is with them because now that guy's dead and they're cutting him up. We cut to our first rock number, Shake It Up, and interestingly, there is at least one thing that was well preserved. The soundtrack, because they put it out on vinyl recently. It's on Spotify, and it sounds so much better than the movie. Also, the album art makes this movie look way more intense than it is. Anyways, after the show, we get a bunch of buff dudes in tidy whiteies. I swear to God, this guy is just showing off. There's a girl waiting outside who warns Jesse, the lead singer, not to go to the next town. A warning Jesse flat out ignores. Doesn't even mention it to the rest of the band. Instead, he's fucking around with music from the Middle Ages that's supposed to bring people back from the dead. They pick up a hitchhiker outside of town who tells them they can stay at her place for the night. Which, uh, staying at a stranger's place is already a red flag, but it seems like her house is right around the corner from where she was hitchhiking. Like, close enough that she could reasonably walk home. And she lives with the dwarves from earlier. In fact, she might be the blonde from earlier, I can't tell. And it's a chicken farm where they kill chickens. And there's a werewolf in the attic? You guys are tipping your hands way too early that there's something wrong with this place. There's no suspense, I know something bad's gonna happen. But there is one surprise. 
a fucking music video out of nowhere. And, like, the opening song was only barely hard rock, but this is straight up synth pop. <laughs> When you say hard rock zombies, I expect something that shreds so hard and so loud it wakes the dead. Not rejected aha music. Also, the music video is garbage. Then, uh, they get arrested because, uh, they all own a van? You boys own this here vehicle? Yes, sir. All of you? Yes, sir. That's trouble. Then it is. Right, Ted. Must be some Cold War anti communist thing? No collective ownership. And their jail is full of hay? Did they confuse jail and medieval dungeons? We see the dwarf family's grandparents fucking and using really bad fake German. Und Grandmama geschleckte Fuckenmachen? Schlecht means bad, so if you are schlecht gefucking, you're not doing a good job. Although, uh, the prefix g makes it past tense, so. There's that. Can't we watch, please? I just like to watch you guys. I don't actually know what that scene was about. Anyways, the blonde bailed the band out of jail, so the concert's still on, despite the protests of the locals. And Jesse gives that girl from earlier his promise ring. Here, my friend bailed us out. She's not your friend. She got us out. She's... Yeah. A murderer. Say a murderer. Th th there's no reason for you to not say a murderer other than to just keep the plot going. It, granted, this family does have a pretty big secret that Jesse definitely shouldn't believe, but... Just say a murderer! That's believable! Seen that guy with the ugly smeared all over his face? I swear I've seen that guy in a movie one time. He went around killing neighborhood dogs with his teeth. <laughs> and that guy with the axe. His head spins all the way around, I know it. Your mics are on, you idiots! And this next number is even less hard rock than the last one. I'm so Man, fuck this band. Get rid of them. Oh, shit. Uh... Oh, never mind, they're still alive. Wait, how'd they electrocute the drummer? Oh, he probably got electrocuted by the boom mic. So there's a city council meeting, or, um, session? Emergency sessions are all... Uh, for those information, Mr. Chair. Uh, yes, Mr. Senior Now, is this an emergency meeting or an emergency session? Well, uh... Because you referred to it as a meeting, yet the good councilman on my left here called it a session. Uh, uh, which is it? Uh, excellent point, Mr. Senior Councilman. Council will vote. All those in favor of meeting signify. Aye. Uh, I'll give him that one. It's a funny bit, if not completely pointless. This seems both less and more accurate than the one in Black Roses. That one seemed more professional, but this one is much more accurate to how conservatives behave. My National Enquirer says that musicians cannot play a single note unless they eat drugs first. And hey, it's all American flags, not the America and Canada nonsense. For an addition to Statute 6969. <laughs> Sex number. They vote to ban rock and roll, which is against the First Amendment. I'd say call the ACLU on these fuckers, but it seems like that should have happened a long time ago. To the effect that rock and roll music should fall under existing town bans against gypsies, circuses with lewd shows, door-to-door -door sales of in 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 intimate devices, and stage plays that depict unnatural acts, 
for calling to question American foreign policy. And yo, what is it about metal ween movies about bands going out to a mysterious monster-infested house and shower sex? It's genuinely bizarre to me how much incidental overlap Rock and Roll Nightmare, Black Roses, Trick or Treat, and this movie have in common. This is just like a movie, huh? The twist better not be that the people in this movie didn't actually exist. Fucking Rock and Roll Nightmare ass bullshit. Nah, she just murders him. Fucking finally. We've established the song that can bring people back from the dead, but it's 35 minutes into the movie and they're still not zombies. Geez, Homer, I thought someone with two wives would be happy. No, you're thinking of someone with two knives. I gotta tell you, this is pretty terrific. <laughs> yeah. She's a werewolf. Why does she need knives to kill them? You look like a bunch of assholes. Thanks, Hank Hill. Jesse, the only living band member, gets chased by a guy with a weed whacker. Though I'm pretty sure they were hoping the darkness and low quality would make people think it's a chainsaw. Uh -huh. Jesse gives the girl a tape of the death song and basically sacrifices himself to save her. And apparently they just had a funeral for these guys in this bumfuck nowhere town that didn't even like them miles away from their families. Hell, it's still the day of the concert. I don't think their families have even been notified. And, uh, the crazy German guy? The, the grandfather of the killer family? Is Adolf Hitler. What in the fuck? What in the absolute fuck? This legitimately comes out of nowhere. Like, I guess it's a joke, but... Why... And he broadcasts that he's gonna take over California. What's his plan? How is it related to killing this one obscure rock band? But at last, the girl, who has a name, but they spend like half the movie calling her The Girl. Hey girl! Wait a second! Plays the respawn music and the band are back as zombies. Meanwhile, Hitler is... The Schicksal of Deutsches Volkes! You know what? Let's skip this part. The band dances around to literally just a funk song. Not even remotely close to hard rock. It is the first time we learn anyone but Jesse's name. Thanks, Tombstones. They go kill the members of the murder family as revenge, and the movie feels the need to flash back to scenes that were, like, ten minutes earlier. I, I thought revenge would be the plot for the back half of the film, but they kill the whole family, including Hitler, in the span of a musical montage. Well, that was a dumb movie. Anyways, until next time, I'm Matt, and why is there still 45 minutes left in this movie? Oh, I guess the townsfolks are enraged the band is alive again? They arrive at the creepy house to find Hitler's a zombie. You know what, I'm coming around on the gag a little. It was sort of ahead of its time in that respect. And speaking of ahead... <laughs> and I guess this is how they keep the plot going. The family is all zombies now. But it seriously takes to the one hour mark for this to get started. Weird that this curse made all of them look like old, decaying zombies, but it just gave the boys immaculate corpse paint. Also, all that music Jesse was playing has awoken the disembodied hand from earlier. And it can also turn people into zombies. And despite most of them being mindless, shambling murderers, the boys make it to the show and coherently play their music. I'm so in love, but you're so young. You know, I just realized, the girl's kind of giving me Rockula vibes. Anyone else? Oh my god, are you okay? Are you okay? What do you mean, are you okay? His head's off! The townspeople figure out the zombies don't like heads. Ghouls hate heads the way Satan hates the church. You see, ghouls are the antithesis of intellectual existence, which centers within the heads. Yeah, man, when have zombies ever been known for eating brains? Whatever, they build giant head costumes, and I, I guess that works? 
Until it doesn't? But why did it kind of work, but then not? Okay, plan B. Sacrifice a virgin to make them sleep for a hundred years. This works. We better get Hard Rock Zombies 2 in 2085. Guys, will you listen to reason? I better come on, half a million just a sign, damn it! Will you say something? What's wrong with you guys? Oh, don't act like every rock star in the 80s didn't act like strung out shambling corpses. Anyways, the manager of the band convinces them to help the girls, so they play the song and lead them into Hitler's gas chambers. See? Good reincorporation. I still don't get it. Unfortunately, that means the band dies too. But as the girl mourns them, Jesse's hand pops out of the ground and gives her his promise ring again. The end. And that's Hard Rock Zombies. The weirdest Rolling Stones documentary I've ever seen. Come on, you knew that one was coming, come on. Like most Metal Ween movies I cover, this isn't good, but it's charming. The plot makes some weird detours, and it does make the film seem unfocused. I mean, it takes forever to get to the zombie plot. But if you're just looking for an absurd little film to throw on for some people, this is great. It's silly, it's campy, and it's just charming as all hell. But more importantly, the titular hard rock didn't really hold up. I gotta find something even harder for next time. Um, if you like rock and roll themed undead creatures, there is of course Rockula. So enjoy that. And until next time, I'm Matt, and happy Metal Ween. Are you sick of borrowing video movies that are exactly like other tapes you've seen before? You know, that are so predictable you've guessed the ending in the first couple of minutes? Well, cop this. This film is so weird, off the planet, incredibly ridiculous, unbelievably far-fetched, depraved and lacking in taste, that I can relate to it. I mean, check this geek eating himself for dinner, or this bloke with his three-handed handshake. Now that's what I call good viewing. So next time you're after something worth watching, hop down to your local video store and grab a copy of Hard Rock Zombies. After all, it's just a bit of all-round good clean fun. Don't look at me like that. You know what you did. Fucking dumbass plot twist fucking eat you. I'm sorry, baby. I didn't mean it.